Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Welcome to the Eunice Mola Show. I am your host Eunice Mola. Tonight we're going to go ahead and start off the program by featuring a young lady from Omaha, Nebraska by the name of Davida Webb. She's a spoken word artist and also a painter. She's going to talk to us about how she became interested in spoken word and she'll also recite for us two forms of poetry. Economy. Our economy is going down. Our community is drained. High expectations, but no incentives to be gained. Rich in schooling, but poor in life. Right now, I'm just a kid, so I don't really feel that parent strife. Our rich are now poor and seeing things they've never seen. Houses going bankrupt, now they're stepping out on our scenes. It's funny how they went from caviar straight to rice and beans. Different places, small spaces, ominous new black faces, children shot and killed right off the world without traces. Now they're feeling overwhelmed because they fell from their false heaven to real hell, from high and mighty to welfare. Now they're feeling it ain't, it ain't fair. Now you've walked in our shoes, but still I don't understand how you choose to refuse to reach out your hand and help, even though you felt how we felt. And the name of my second poem is Love's Accomplices. Today love came to town and wreaked havoc on everything she touched. I wasn't really prepared for her company, so I should've knew this small house wouldn't be enough, but she unexpectedly showed up with heavy luggage in hand and a list of dang near impossible demands, but she said, in this suitcase I carry happiness and your significant other's heart. So if our visit goes well, then you two should never part. So when I seen her on my doorstep, I should've been happy to let her in, but I was hesitant, not because of her appearances, cause she brought a few friends, actually her kin. Mischief tried shaking my hand with some sly grin, and I'm thinking, oh no, I ain't let none of you in. This is all too sudden, so I'm doing everything in my power to stall, but then love introduced me to sacrifice, so I stepped aside and let these truly unwelcome guests into my humble abide. And upon a hello, not even that, just a hi. Loneliness clings onto my shoulder and starts to cry about how her and love never spend enough time. And I'm saying to myself, this is not my job. Where did self-esteem go? And as I'm searching for, I get hit by this deadly misdirected arrow that jealousy intentionally set up to hit trust. Then anger starts breaking stuff, so I start to cuss. But my profane sentence is cut short when inappropriate words are whispered in my ear by lust. So I turned to her in disgust and she's standing hand in hand with amusement. Started to cuss them both out but somehow ended up talking to confusion who then planted this illusion that instead of me gaining with love that I was losing. So I misinterpreted and took it as a sign and I kicked love and her whole family out in one single file line. And as I close that door I feel this weight lift off my chest so I sit down to rest but I start hearing footsteps. Who is love left? And I stand up and I'm staring face to face with regret. And she said, once love is gone, she'll never leave. And she wants to introduce me to this kid that we somehow conceived. And I'm staring at this kid and all our facial features are the same. She didn't have to tell me her name. I already knew it. It was pain. Overwhelmed by these emotions, my feelings start to smother me. So I black out, but I wake up to recovery. Now it's three months later, and me and Like are going steady. And I haven't called love back because I'm clearly not ready. Love's accomplices. And that's pretty much. <laughs> My name is Vita Webb, I'm 20 years old. Uh, I go to Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. And um, I was first introduced to spoken word by my poetry teacher. Um, her name is Miss Felicia. And I met her through a program called Upper Bound. And it just helps like young uh, scholars, well young minorities get to college. And uh, at Upper Bound, they had a summer program where you could just stay on college campus and take courses, you know, almost like a college student. And that's where I met her. She taught spoken word, like, one-on-one. -on -one. And from there, I just branched off. The first poem I ever did is called Economy. I was 15 at the time. And I remember Miss Felicia being like, 
Today we're gonna write about we're gonna write about social social causes that you know that impact us. And I was like, okay, well, what would make more sense to write about? I was like, okay, economy. Um, you know, especially because the program I was in was aimed towards you know minorities that were uh, that had low income houses and households. So I was like, this would be a perfect topic to write about for this. Uh, this assignment that you got. And economy just stemmed. It was like my first poem. And from that, she just seen that, like, I need to push her harder. She's going to be a good poet. That's what her words are. <laughs> OK, poetry is like, roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. Spoken word is like roses are red and violets are simple and I know you like cheesy poetry so I want to see your dimples. You know, something that makes you, it's, it's different. It's, it's just delivery, that's what it is. Poetry is written and structured, you know, it has a certain rhyme sequence, you know, haikus got certain frames and stuff like that. Spoken word doesn't have to rhyme. You could go on a stage and tell your story. And as long as you give it emotion and enough stage presence, it's spoken word. So that's the big difference between the two. I think that spoken word, it used to be commercialized. Um, it was this whole show called uh, Deaf Poetry Jam. And it was like just a whole list of poets, you know, going down and performing like their work on a stage in front of a crowd, you know. But after that went away, spoken word lost all its commercialization. It's just, it's really underground. like. Um, I have yet to run into people who like, oh yeah, I slam. You know, you're gonna run into people like, oh yeah, I play basketball, I do stuff like that. You haven't run into some, to somebody who does poetry, like, oh yeah, I compete and I do my poetry in front of a big audience and a lot of people come out to this event to see this all go down. So it's not really commercialized, sadly. I think that rap and spoken word are hand in hand. I'm sure that if I had like a really dope beat, you know, I, and I recited one of my poems on top of it, it would automatically become rap. And I think that everything has a base. I think that um, music, okay, hip hop, uh, they have all of the words planned out. Like, let me find a good way to describe this. Hip hop is spoken word because the base of it is the lyrics. And your lyrics are your poem. And if you take away the beat from any rap song, it becomes spoken word. So spoken word is the base for any hip hop, for any music wise. I really think that spoken word, since I did say spoken word, is a vocalized poetry. Music is vocalized poetry. Just different beats, different artists. Spoken word is the base of music. That's what I, my conclusion is. <laughs> spoken word impacts, <laughs> spoken word really changed me because before I had spoken word, I didn't have a way to release how I was feeling, you know. Some people find different activities to, you know, get their minds off of whatever they're going through. And at the time I didn't have that type of release. Um, and once I met my mentor, Miss Felicia, she showed me that not only can you write down how you're feeling, you can make stories out of this. You can make stories that relate to other people. And if I wouldn't have had that release, I wouldn't be as creative as I am today. I wouldn't be so outgoing because spoken word put me on a stage in front of people. It made me network with other people and show off all these other talents that I wouldn't have ever, I would have never stepped onto a stage if I didn't know what spoken word was. And so I think that it can impact anybody because the world is so big. The world's so big and then it's hard to be heard, you know? And so for that one second when you're reciting your poetry in front of the stage, in front of people, it's like, I I can make the world stop, well, this little section of the world stop. 
and listen to what I'm saying. And I think that all youth should have the opportunity. So I, I definitely think that spoken word is beneficial to anybody that touches it. Hi, um, my name is Gide Josephine uh, Jonathan, um, but I also go by Gide Jansuk because that's um, my um, national, I guess, my, I don't know, that's, just, that's the way that I identify. Um, I think it, it's, it's important to embrace um, th our names. So in regards to my educational background, um, when I came to Canada, I was about seven. Uh, so I was in the, edu in the Toronto District School Board system. Um, and then after that I went on to, so a after um, coming here and having to immerse myself in, in the Canadian culture and having to go through ESL in order to, to pick up um, or to be able to excel in my studies, I then went on, went on to middle school, went on to high school, but the difference was that I now went to a high school that was a Catholic school and so that helped to affirm my Christian faith. And that it was also, it gave it, it was a different experience. It was also an all-girls school, and um, I found the value of of being around strong, educated women, and that's something that has also, in many ways, shaped the way that I that I, I view myself and the way that I carry myself. After four years of being at um, this Catholic high school, I then on went went on I then went on to pursue um, a bachelor's degree at York University. So I'm currently studying two majors, one being sociology and my second being human rights and equity studies. It's been an interesting experience because I, I feel that um, sociology, it has its benefits. There are things that I can definitely agree with in regards to the functions, norms, and customs of, of um, society as well as other, other aspects. But I think that it also lacks that Afrocentric um, perspective. Um, it was only a few, a few years ago that I, I started to be introduced to African sociologists um, who I've, I rarely if ever see um, within my textbooks. It's, it's even rarely mentioned in class and so that's something that I would say is lacking within, within that program but also lacking within the education system in general. I don't think it, it caters to um, the cultural values that are central to um, African cultures, but I think that's also something that our families and our community needs to help instill in us so that we can now take this education and now impart it um, into, um, I guess, our we can now take that and try to at least recreate a model that will be consistent with our values or consistent with um, different ways of carrying ourselves. Yeah, and that's my um, education experience at the moment. It's, it's still, it's to be continued. <laughs> I'm here for the Cuckoo Community Conference in Kansas City. Uh, it's May 24th um, at the moment. And I am the youth liaison for the Cuckoo Community of North America. Um, I'm very happy that this conference is, is taking place because it's not oftentimes that, it's not very often that um, everybody's, that people are provided this opportunity to fly down, um, drive, um, and, and gather to, to discuss the issues um, that are affecting our communities, as well as to share the achievements and, and to work towards um, what it is that we feel uh, is lacking in our communities and to also ensure that um, the positive things that are happening continue to happen. Um, it's very, it's also a privilege to be, to be here as well because it's not, we have to acknowledge that, you know, not everyone has the resources um, or the time to be able to, to come down and commit to this. Um, but if you can, I would, I would recommend that you do so. Um, I had a very interesting experience in terms of where I've, I've um, been in the world. I grew in I grew up in I was born sorry in Kajukeji, and uh, they were shelling my village so that um, 
that led to us having to flee and um, stay in Uganda, which happened for a few years. Um, we were in the process of coming to America, um, but we had realized that, that the process would take so much longer, and so the better plan was to go to Kenya. And so after six years of being in Uganda, we, we, um, we stayed in Kenya at the refugee camp for about uh, two years. And then we um, were applying to come to America. But what had happened was, um, I believe this was in 1998, the US Embassy in Nairobi was bombed, which um, led to us having to now apply to Canada. And when we came to Canada, we didn't really have it was, it was interesting because the expectations that we've had were not necessarily um, true in the sense that you know, we thought it would be very cold, but we came at such a good time. We came in May. And um, my parents are also very hardworking. Um, so they, found, they, they were able to find a way to, I guess, adjust. And although that's not easy, regardless of whether you have resources or not, it wasn't, from what I recall, it wasn't such a, a, I guess, a bad experience. It did have its challenges, but it wasn't a bad experience. So I basically grew up in Canada. I was here at about the age of seven, and um, that has influenced the way that I, I, in some ways, approach or view, view what it means to be a cuckoo and what it means to be South Sudanese, what it means to be, um, a minority in, in a place such as Canada. In regards to um, education, which is such a, a big um, aspect of our cultures, I, I would say that education systems here don't, they have their benefits and they have their disadvantages. And um, one of the disadvantages that I've experienced is that it does not accommodate um, other cultures linguistically, and so having to learn English and having to um, to focus on that in order to do well or to excel in this education system um, can can have a strong impact. And if you don't have that strong community around you that's constantly speaking your language, you can easily lose touch of that, and and it becomes a challenge when you when you think in English. And so for me, my challenge right now is is trying to get back to all these languages that I picked up when I was in Uganda, when I was in Kenya, um, and also my, um, also Kuku as well, or also known as Bari. And, and so that's something that I, I'm looking towards, but it's, it's an exciting experience. I just wanted to um, take the time to say that um, we definitely need to have more of these, of these, I don't want to say events, because events they have an expiry date. I think this is something that shouldn't expire, but I think that we need to take more time to have initiatives such as these, because these are, these are the initiatives that help to affirm um, the importance of, of being cultured, of being connected, and of being um, able to express yourself in the way that you see fit without having to compromise um, too much. And it's in these spaces that, that you are, that you get to interact and you get to encounter um, elders who have a lot of wisdom that they can pass down to you. And you're also, off, you're also able to, to see the perspective that's not often um, given to you, the perspective of, of the elders. And um, that's something that I definitely got from here. Um, I think that, as, as a South Sudanese, it's, I think we've been through a lot as a South Sudanese. I think a lot of us have been through a lot in regards to the war, in regards to you know, having to flee to these neighboring countries, having to come to um, foreign places like Canada or, or United States and having to reestablish yourself, go back to school. But I think given the circumstances that we have been in, I think that we've been, done, we've, we've been doing very well. Um, given the fact that a lot of us have been going back home. And I think that there's just, if we continue to, to do that, I think um, we can hopefully build the next generation that's needed in order to um, transcend these issues that we are facing at the moment. To end tonight's program, 
we're going to be taught a traditional wedding dance from the country of Sudan. As we know, Sudan and South Sudan are two different countries. So a young lady by the name of Balsam Ali will teach us the Sudan form of traditional dancing when it comes to weddings. Hi, my name is Balsam Ali and I am originally from Sudan. I've been here in the U.S. for about 17 years now. I am currently studying my master's degree in public administration. The reason I decided to choose this field is to make sure I make change within Africa, third world countries, and just see what change can be done and to progress the countries itself. Sudan, once upon a time, was the largest country in Africa. It consisted of South Sudan and North Sudan. Um, with the grace of God, the South Sudan got their independence in the year of 2011, and now um, they're two separate countries. I am from North Sudan, and I will be presenting a Sudanese wedding dance, and that is the most prestigious dance that a woman can do during her wedding. The Sudanese bridal dance consists of many hip movements, if you will. The first move we're gonna do is actually with your hand. It's just like so, circular motion, the left hand, then the right hand. So, like this, then like this. Similar with the hip. Like this, like this. Then the next move is making sure that your back is straight and kind of in a way, if you will, push back a little so your chest is high up in the sky and anything from the waist down is upwards, backwards, if that makes sense. So like so is how you should be standing. So the first move again was the left hand, right hand, and you stand like so. So let's do this, this, and then this. Then after that, you move your left foot, similar to the hand, like this. Same thing with the right hand, like this. So again, we go one step this way, then this way, then you move your hip this way, then you move this hip to the right, you stand straight, then after standing straight, this, both of your hands, you put them up and then you put them down basically. Put them up and you put them down. So we'll do it from the beginning, the left, the right, and keep in mind you're moving the left foot with it as well. So left foot and the left hand, right foot, right hand. You're still standing like this. This is when you go like this and then you put it down. You put it up, you put it down. After you do that, then you basically the same motions again with the left hand. You move it this way and then you move your body with it as well. Then again, like this, like this like this, like this, like this. Same with the right hand now. Like this, so like this, like this, like this, then like this. This is where the two hands come in. So you're standing straight again, your chest up high, and anything down is all the way kind of out and the chest is up high. So you're like this, you look up in the sky, and then again, you move it in a circular motion. So it's like this, like this, like this. And you're kneeling down at the same time. So again, from the beginning, like this, to the right, chest up. Then you go down, hand up and down, up and down up and down. The next one is similar to what we just did. You would move the left hand and this time you would move the entire body to the left. So like this and you're still kneeling up and down like this, like this, and like this. The main dance, this is what the woman would do especially when it's your chest is up high. You would put your hands together as if you're making a triangle. You put that above your nose. And then this is again with your chest high and you go in a circular motion. So, and then your left foot, again, it's doing the twist. So this way, 
This way. And you're moving your hip to the left as well. This way. And now you should be able to make the Sudanese traditional wedding dance. Thank you for joining us on tonight's program here on the Eunice Mola Show. Join us next week, same time, same place. If you believe you can achieve.